Hey everybody, this is Big Z from Side by Side Guys, and today we're looking at a new product set from Invictus Off-Road. If you haven't heard of Invictus Off-Road, they're a new company to the off-road scene making Molly compatible door storage systems for Polaris Razors, uh, Mahindra Roxers, Jeeps, etc. And they have a neat system of allowing you to ha have unlimited mounting points of accessories to your doors and uh, the rear behind the seats of your Razor. Um, and it allows you basically unlimited flexibility with what you want to mount to and where to on your doors and behind your seats. So uh, it looks really interesting. Let's take a look. You can see that this is coming from Coltac. Um, they've partnered with Coltac because they already have the manufacturing facilities to produce all this stuff. Um, they're simply coming behind it with an engineering and uh, comprehensive like development of a product and then sending those to production with Coltec because they already have uh, all of the machines to roll out the um, plastics and materials required to build all this. So uh, nonetheless, let's take a look. So we can see that they've provided a pretty good packaging. I'm assuming that if you order just one of these, you're going to get just this tube in the mail. All right, so let's take a look. So this would be the half door Molly system. And because they're in the tube, it looks like they want to curl up on us. So looks like they come with mounting straps for your Polaris Razor door. And then these are the Molly compatible door liners. And uh, this one happens to be in that OD green. Got a nice leather patch for Invictus Off-Road right here. You got some nice screw mounts here. So this will utilize the uh, factory mounting hardware that holds the door skins to the frame. Um, so you'll be able to pull those out, run them through here, and then it should be a nice snug fit for you to attach your accessories. Um, I don't know if you can see it, uh, but this material is very nice. It's like a canvas type material. Um, it is woven. It's probably like a wax sealed canvas. I just checked and these are considered Ranger Green colorway. Um, it's a very nice muted camo type green without being too brown. Um, I really like it a lot. So if you're a uh, guy that's out in the woods a lot, this would go well with what you're doing. Let's take a look at the other half doors. All right, so these, these are the lower half doors, okay? Looks like it's laser cut. Um, has this nice branding down here as well. And you can see that there's mounting strips um, strate strategically located around the hardware of the door. So if you have the OEM Razor doors, uh, these mounting points and these hardware points will all coalesce with the framing hardware of the door. So if you know the, the razor shell door, it starts with a frame bar that goes around and down, um, and then you'd have your mounting hardware at the top. And since there is no mounting hardware at the bottom, they provide these slits here for these quick straps to be Velcroed through here and then around the door, and uh, should keep it pretty nice and snug. Again, these are really well made. I'm really impressed by the craftsmanship. Um, the material is really feels really good and these laser cuts are awesome because it seals the weave uh, along the edge so they're not going to come frayed or anything like that. Um, so again we got the upper doors and the lower doors in Ranger Green. Uh, let's take a look at the other package. Alright so let's open these ones up. Okay, so again, you got a bag of quick straps for mounting to the doors. So you can see on here that this has a can, camo back pattern, and then if you flip it over, 
it's got a coyote brown uh, color as well. So they've taken the time to color this side of the fabric and then print on the reverse side a camo pattern. So depending on what you're doing, uh, the design aesthetic of your vehicle, you could go with either a brown or a camo. And, and to do that, all you would have to do is simply reverse this to the other side of the vehicle and then you have the other color. So unfortunately you don't retain the, the leather badge on the outside by doing that. But uh, that's a really cool option if you have a rock and uh, a rock crawling edition razor or something like that where um, you may want that desert brown. And then if you decide to go down a wrap or camo edition wrap, you could always switch over to the camo. So we have the upper doors, the lower doors, full doors. All right, so this. This is a behind the seat mounting skin. Again, made from that same canvas material. And this one is in a wolf gray, both sides. And this is mounted behind a two seater seat or a four seaters rear seats. So this is mounted to the back of the razor with the mounting points from the paneling screws. There's some T40s holding on the uh, plastics on the back of the, uh, of the cab. And I'm assuming that's what you'd use through here. Um, I don't think there's, there may be some here, but I think I know for sure that there's at least one or two here and then on the side as well. But uh, so the basic concept is you use the, the factory OEM screws to mount this to the back of the skins and you're not really storing stuff behind it per se. Uh, you're storing stuff on it. So uh, that could be anything from a bag. That could be an ax. That could be a shovel, uh, really anything. So let's take a closer look at how this works, this mounting system, and how the accessories interact with it. And then let's get it on the machine and see how that works. So let's start talking about actually installing these accessories. Um, with Molly, if you're not familiar with Molly, it's an interwoven system. And you'll see that on this one, it's got the pull through lines. Uh, and these are meant to be interwoven between the actual mounting surface, whether that be the skins, a backpack, a vest, anything like that. And then they interweave between the actual accessory and the mounting hardware. And by doing that, you're creating an interwoven weave. So even if these buttons come loose, if something happens, something hits it and it pops up like that, it's interwoven in between the product and the mounting hardware. And it's not going to come off without some serious uh, negotiation of the straps out of those pockets, which um, as you're about to see as we install this would be a fairly uh, intensive thing to happen. Um, and I don't foresee that ever coming out. I bet you we could ride all summer with these mounted to the skins with the buttons detached and you would never see these even move uh, a budge from their position because once you're woven, the product can't move out of that locked woven um, mounting. So. Uh, let's take a look at mounting this. We'll do it in fast forward so I don't waste your time uh, as this is normally a tedious process. But the proper way to do this would be to start with where you want to mount your bag. So we're going to start on the second row here to, to navigate the bag just above the bottom here so that we can still mount uh, through this hole down here. So I'm just going to flip it over and then we're going to take the strap. You can see that on this product, we're about, we're a little bit off center to line up correctly here, but it shouldn't be a problem um, in this case. So uh, we're gonna start at the second rail here. And you always wanna start uh, with the top point so that your bag will sit on this line here and not move any further down. Um, and so we'll move this through, we'll do this one as well. and then they will pull through just a little bit to give some slack to bend the strap back up through the slot. Just like that. And then you pull that through and you can see that once that's pulled down, that product can't, it can't go any lower than that point, right? Unless this gives out this this doubled up, uh, double sewn connection here. So it's never going to go down and it's never going to go up because what the next step is to jump into the first weave. So we're going to take the strap and go back through the first weave here. I'll do that on both sides. 
and you'll notice that I didn't go through the second band or the third band or the fourth band because the next step is to once again jump back down to the mounting hardware and put that in the next weave and then you're counter weaving in between all the rails and what that does is it creates one two three four five weaves and you're never going to have this thing slip or move around so let me hurry up and finish that for you and see how that looks see I have it now woven completely through so we have the top one going through the mounting hardware through the skin back through the bag back to the skin back to the bag back to the skin back to the bag back to the skin back to the bag down here I guess it's not lining yeah it is right there so we put that through the last loop and then we pull that ribbon all the way down and as you do it, the more loops you put through, the harder it is to negotiate. But once you're ready, all you have to do then is to mount that snap like that. Now, if I finish both sides off and snap it, you can see the bag is now part of the skin. It's not coming off. On the back side, you can see the weaving happening here, and you can see I've done it correctly every other loop. And that's very important. A lot of people just kind of do it through the back and then to the bottom. That will completely negate the whole system, and it'll cause this to pinch. And what you're gonna do is create additional strain on these slits, and it's going to eventually, over time, just continue to wear down on that corner and eventually want to tear it across. Now, this seems like really strong material that's not going to tear quickly, but if you install incorrectly, uh, it's not going to operate as intended. So please, if you're going to buy and invest into a Molly system, please take the time to do it correctly. It's a little tedious, but it's worth it. So if we take this back over and we look at the weaving here, you can see that even if we disconnect this snap on both sides, right, this is not going to move anywhere like I can I can yank on it I can do it from different angles I can put my hand in it and try to rip it out it's still not moving because of this weaving this weaving is exactly what makes the Molly system so incredible you'll see that everything stays flat nothing's crimped nothing's out of place and this will become a reliable storage solution for you now Almost all Molly accessories have additional straps. So you could take even, if you wanted to, a secondary Molly bag, like this one, again provided by Invictus. Thank you for your support. And this is either like a, a bottle carrier or a radio carrier, something like that. Um, and you could attach this one to that bag. So you could have the storage bag behind, a bottle bag, and be set. So if you're out on the trails and you don't want to have you already have door bags, you already have inner door skins or whatever. A rear behind the seat makes a lot of sense because you can put storage and a bottle holder and whatever you want between the seats. And then behind the seats, you could add like a shovel, an ax, um, a saw, anything you want really. Taking a look at some of the Molly accessories and why you might want to use this for your rig. I uh, just kind of wanted to go through maybe some of these bags that Invictus uh, had sent us and some of the ones that we got off of Amazon. You know, if we're looking through these, uh, we obviously have the large storage pouch, uh, which is a great solution for between the seats. Um, you have a start. You have the smaller storage pouches, um, which are, are nice if you want to stack multiple individual cases. Um, this one in particular came with the Molly Quick Clips. So these are little D rings that you can use to attach various items to your bags, and um, all that takes is to run them through the loops and then clamp them shut, and then they just quick. There's a button on the top here, just quick disconnect and allow you the freedom to take your item off. So if you're somebody that takes along with 
uh, along with you um, extra sets of keys or uh, dog leashes or if you want a quick attach point for an animal if that sits in the front seat with you. Um, flashlights, any carabiner type accessory can be quickly attached to Molly with these uh, neat little accessories as well. You have these uh, quick storage bags which are just an empty water pass through mesh on the bottom, quick zip on the top to cinch them down. Uh, I got another one here in black uh, with a bottle, water bottle inside of it with a quick cinch. And again, these all come with these Molly um, bands and on this one you can see how that's attached. It doesn't go through um, a ring like on the gray one that we installed here. But it's the same concept. You start at the first slot where you want it to stay at the top. You weave it in, out, into your bag, out, into your bag, out, and all the way down until you get to the snap. So uh, same concept on all of these things. Um, you can see here we have a first aid bag. Um, these are just another you know, tote bag, but they come with these little Velcro signals to tell you what they are so that you don't get confused. And if anyone else is riding with you or responding in an emergency, they know where to look and would identify which pouch is which. So uh, another good option, um, again, with the attached bands. You can get these tool bags, which are horizontally mounted. Um, you can see that this one has the straps going this way. And so on the actual unit, it would ride like this, like behind the seat, this might be a good choice. Um, or for the door where maybe your knees go. And then you can see that this one has the interwoven straps, including the Velcro. So this could easily be this here and uh, easily switch jobs. So even if you had two bags on your doors like this, like on these um, upper door skins, right? So on your razor, you can install this, install this bag like that, this bag like that, and then this could be your set for your door. Um, and then on the next ride, this becomes something else, but you still want your first aid, you put it in this one, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, so choose your bags and your accessories the way you want to set up your rig, uh, because if you don't have Velcro and you want to have patches, you know, that might be something to consider. Also, planning for where things are going and how much space you have. Uh, so if you talk about this back skin behind the seat, there's not a whole lot of room behind the seats unless you're very um, height challenged. Uh, you're not gonna be scooting that seat really far forward. So you're not gonna have a ton of storage back there, but these little pouches make a lot of sense. These little tool bags make a lot of sense to go back there along with maybe some of your trail tools like your saws or your axes, things like that. All right, so with each one of these skin systems, they come with these straps for mounting. So uh, what these are, are just simple Molly compatible straps that have button connections. Um, they're a nice solid positive connection. They take a little bit of force to get undone. Um, so make sure that you're not wanting to move these around too much. Um, Cause I'm sure you're, you're gonna wear down and fatigue this joint here, but uh, basically, the concept is you have these little flaps which will interface with the Molly system and these will help you get a strap in, but it's going to stop right where these tabs are, see? So you can put these around, you can put these around a bar through the Molly system and they're not going to slide around and then, you know, the buttons go back behind or anything because these tabs are what stop them from going through. And you can see that the gray, uh, the gray option comes with gray bands, the black come with black bands, um, and the green also come with black bands. So uh, these are also Velcro and these ones are snaps. So I'm um, not sure exactly what predicates which. I think these are version one and these are version two. Um, I believe these are what are coming with all the new products. Um, so these are made from the same canvas-like material that the skin's made out of. Uh, but these Velcro straps are super handy for uh, creating additional securing points to the doors or places that you're going to, you know, place these skins. Um, but the other nice thing about these is they allow you to uh, mount anything to the skin, right? So as long as you can wrap something around it, you can mount something to the Molly skin. So that's really nice. That's not something to consider as a downfall. The Velcro actually serves a really great purpose. 
So I went and grabbed our little tactical hatchet here. Uh, we use this for self-defense and miscellaneous jobs around the campsite. Um, really small head, uh, but a nice long uh, handle in comparison to the head. Um, these are super cheap, super fun, make little fun projects for the kids to go out to the camp and do things. Um, but you can see that this, this item, this tool, has really no way to mount to the razor unless you were to zip tie it to a bar or something, right? So that's not convenient. So if we take the Molly system that we have here, you know, behind the seat, this would fit perfect, right? If we were to do the axe, you'd want, you know, to leave some room up above it for other things. Uh, so let's take this and let's wrap it around. That's one, two, three, four up. All right, so you can see that I put the strap through the Molly system and that these tabs are holding it from going up or from going down. Now, this is not the world's strongest material, right? So if you pull too hard, it will collapse and pull through. But if you are just using it for positioning of the strap so that they don't fall out when you're using the item, they work perfect. So if we put the ax back here, right, we can see that you can now wrap this all the way around. So for each of your designs of storage, you may want to trim these one way or the other. All right, so I couldn't find my garage sears, but I found these snips. So you could take this and you could trim it to whatever length you need. And then that becomes perfectly mounted for your product, right? So there's that. And then we could do the same thing over here and get another one. Your X is completely mounted to the Molly system. Now you can see that these ones that come with it are actually a T, which means you could go around something and then you could also strap around that side as well. So those are nice and handy as well. Don't, don't lose those, those are super handy. So I did wanna say that it is important that you take the time to lay this all out before you mount it to the razor. So um, if you notice that you have these mount points and I've verified that these mount points here in the center, the center two, these side ones, these top ones, all mount and these bottom ones all mount to uh, the, the front facing to the seat paneling. Um, but these outer ones on the top, um, I believe go, they fold over, they fold over the top of the shoulder of the plastics and then mount down. Um, so if you were to mount this to the razor and then try to attach all your systems, getting behind it, once you have all these T40s put back into the razor are gonna be completely um, a hindrance to you effectively installing any of this. So you're gonna to wanna to lay this out. You're gonna to wanna to plan it out correctly to the way that it needs to be on the vehicle. And then you're gonna to have to make sure that you're not blocking any of these mount points unless you have access to them by flipping the thing up or moving it to the side or, or whatever. So plan ahead, take your time. It's a tedious process, but in the end it'll pay for itself. So something I just found out uh, as I was trying to place together um, a layout for the behind the seats, uh, you'll notice that the, the riveting is all lined up fairly logically, except for the center one right here and this one right up here. Now, at first it looks like a mistake, but in reality, the plastics of the razor overlap and the center line does go down the middle except for the screw is on one side of that because the two halves of the plastics have to overlap. So they're not exactly centered. So it's important to take a look at which side of the razor your screw is on to match it up with this because you may get through all this mounting and then come to find out you have this backwards. So go take a look at your razor, flip it over if you need to, but a good way to know if you have it the right way or not is to look at the included patching on the top right hand corner. If that's not exposed, you have it backwards. If it's exposed, you have it the right way up. All right, so I just took this over and dry fit it on the razor as you should always do when installing something like this. And I verified that the mounting points all lined up correctly. And the interesting thing about this 
is that the Polaris back half of the cab is split into two pieces. So you have a tub that comes up the bottom and then you have a back strip that goes in front of like the turbo or the manifold, etc. And then you have two pieces that overlap on top of that. So this is not the full height of the rear uh, behind the seats area. So uh, this is just the top half. And then these top mounting points actually fold over the shoulder and almost line up exactly on this third slot. So if you imagine folding this at that point, that's the height that you have. So you need to know that before you install your accessories because if you go to install a bag, let's say you go to install this tool bag right here, right? And you go, I want it all the way at the top. Uh, you're gonna end up trying to fold that bag in half as it gets over the shoulder. So you need to understand where your mounting points are and because you're folding on this slot here, I would recommend mounting on the uh, fourth or the fifth slot down to avoid any additional stress on that. factory OEM doors. This is a, a deep plastic piece kind of like this skin here with an actual tubular frame that goes all the way down and around. To mount the skins to the doors, um, these skins actually go through the factory holes here just like that and then these slots are for the um, the tabs that come with the skin to go through and around the frame bar and then clasping around the skin. Now you'll see here I don't have the factory doors on Uncle Ben's Razor. We have the UTV Giant uh, doors and you can see that this bolt here doesn't line up because I'm supposed to be using the one back here and the hole over here doesn't line up because it's blocked by the metal door. Now you'll also notice that there's no bar down here to mount to, right? So the solution for that is to either let it hang or to use a mounting uh, pad with a two-sided tape and you can put the squares right where the, the slots line up and then you can use uh, zip ties to hold it down. Now I'm not a big fan of that, um, but that's a limitation. So if, you, like many, many other Razor owners, if you're using these solid aluminum or steel doors, um, this might not be the product for you. Now, that being said, if we take a look at the full door skin, and we line it up with the mounting holes, um, you'll see that you'll have access to the factory mounting holes along the top here, and if this door wasn't blocking that screw and that screw, uh, you'd have access to those doors mounting points as well. Uh, and then with those mounting points all secured, you'd be able to let this hang and not really have much of a problem. But at that point, the question is, do you go with just the upper doors at that point? Like we see here, and those would mount in. Um, again, you'd have the top uh, row of connections, but you're missing out on this one and the one that would be back here. So, um, you know, it's a great, it's a great coverage. Um, it doesn't cover everything though. So as long as you don't have these style doors and you have OEM Polaris doors, 
which a lot of people do, and that's great. And they're great looking doors. Uh, these skins will work just fine for you, and pretty sure you're going to be happy with it, whether you get the top or if you get the full door. Um, I believe that anyone that invests in full doors and these skins is going to be happy. So you can see here we have a PRP set of padded door bags on the top of a full door set like I was mentioning earlier, giving you the option to take the door bags off if you ever wanted to. Uh, as you can see with the uh, third party UTV Giant type doors, this bag, uh, this liner actually just flaps around. There's nothing to secure it to. Now you could do the two sided tape mounting points all along the side and get that more snug. Um, but it will flap, especially when there's uh, weight hanging from them. Uh, now, something else that I just found out while installing these is this front uh, screw that goes into the, the clasp bracket that then holds on this corner uh, normally would go through this part of the bag. Now, with the riveting from this bag and the riveting from this skin, this OEM bolt is not long enough to bite into the nut and secure itself. You have to pick one or the other. Uh, being a, a knee pad, you could just leave this one hanging. It's pretty, pretty rigid the way it kind of sits and has this part of the bag to hold it forward. Uh, and then leaving the skin secured so that anything down here is good. Um, but that's just something to consider. If you have door bags, you may need to buy replacement hardware to extend the bolts. All right, so here I have it, the door skin mounted to uh, the factory door with the third party of the TV Giant uh, lower door as well. Again, we talked about the flapping, uh, but you really only get three points of mounting. You don't have access to this bolt. You don't have access to tying into the frame there. And you get this one, two, and three. And you'll notice that this section here is since it's, this screw is lowered, it, it buckles here. It creates a, a fold. And uh, you'll also notice that there's a pocket here uh, at the top that could catch on things as well. Or be a benefit. You could slide stuff back there. I mean, there's always a plus side to everything, right? But um, just know that uh, this point to this point is a gap in the OEM frame along the top here. So. Um, again, if this was secured better, it'd be great. If you had the OEM doors, this would fit perfect. Uh, since we don't have the OEM lower doors, it doesn't. All right, so you can see here I have just the upper door skin installed. See that this is still creating a buckle, right? And I still don't have these two mounting points. So if I were to take this one off and I were to place it up at this hole right up here because you'll see that there's two holes in this frame and you could put a, a, a nut clip on there. If you were able to use one of those that would actually line up a lot better but then this one doesn't line up right and this hole this rivet lines up right in the middle of these two holes and so you'd end up having to tap another hole anyways. Now I don't always like being negative and I think there's always a positive side of things. I think if you got these and it wasn't fitting quite well like you have here, you could easily burn through a hole with a soldering iron, creating an actual sealed, um, a melted edge on the, on the canvas weave. And then you could mount it wherever you wanted. If you wanted it up here, if you wanted to swing it down and go some other holes, or if you wanted to use the full door skin and create mounting points for zip ties or self tap screws or whatever, you could, you could do that and you'd be completely happy with these skins. There's nothing stopping you from DIYing these and making them your own and making them perfectly suited to what you want um, and what fits your razor or your rig. So that being said, you could easily take these and adapt them to another rig as well. They don't have to go on a Polaris razor. They're just riveted for and cut for a razor. All right guys, well, you know, what it really comes down to is if you have OEM doors or not. If you have OEM Polaris Razor lower half doors, the Invictus Off-Road lower Molly door skins are gonna work great. Uh, the upper skins are gonna have that little bit of a crease 
um, or that little bit of a pocket that may catch on things, that may really annoy some people. It may not annoy you at all. So uh, take that into consideration if you're looking at buying these. If you have a third party lower door system that is not the tube and skin frame style, uh, I can't really recommend these. Um, they're not gonna line up and they're not gonna give you a true snug, secure fit. Now, if you do have the OEM doors, they're gonna be great. Please don't get me wrong. I want everybody to understand these are a great product for OEM Polaris Razor doors. Now, the behind the seat skin that goes on the firewall, I really like that. I think it's a great option for anybody that has a razor. Technically speaking, this would fit any razor that is 2015 and up, whether that be a thousand, a turbo, turbo S, um, they're all gonna have the same uh, skin profiles and so they're gonna all work. I really like having things that you need to use somewhat frequently, but not super frequently, um, accessible behind the, chip, behind the seat that it's not like in a toolbox, under a cooler, behind a spare tire and all that kind of stuff. So if you're looking for toiletries, uh, if you're looking for uh, just a place to put your, your belongings, if you're looking for you know recovery tools, things like that, that you would be wanting to use fairly quick, but not have to dig for them, um, the behind the seat skin is a fantastic product. It's really easy to install. I recommend putting the push pins in first. That'll hold it up on the shoulder. And then you can replace the OEM T40 screws back into the frame. Um, it really is a great product. I really like it. It's really durable. Um, I've tried yanking on it from various angles and using various tools and things that you might encounter with a razor to see if I could get the actual skin to tear and none of it happened. There was a little bit of deformation, a little bit of um, bowing in the cuts, but that's just expected from uh, having a canvas weave type material that is being used in this product. Overall, I think the Invictus Off-Road behind the seat Molly attachment system is a fantastic product for any razor owner out there. The door skins are really gonna come down to you and what you have in your vehicle. You have the OEM doors, it's gonna be a great product. If you have non-OEM lower doors, it's really not gonna be a good fit for you. Um, I would be willing to bet that uh, Invictus is going to do a little bit of R&D, make these things better, make a 2.0, make a, uh, a revised version that's really going to stand out as a better fit um, and maybe be a little bit more compatible with third parties. They've already told me that they're working on a lower door um, attachment system that would allow you to use third party uh, doors like the UTV giant doors that we were showing. Um, but until then, um, only get them if you have the OEM doors. And if you do have the OEM doors, you're gonna be super satisfied. They're a great product, high quality, high strength, really flexible. Your creativity with the Molly system is really limited by your imagination. Um, and the product is really a great product. Uh, so I recommend if you're looking for some behind the seat storage, the Molly system from Invictus Off-Road is really gonna be hard to beat. And uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. Till the next time, peace. If you found this product review helpful in any way, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. We have a lot of great video content coming out in 2020 and we really want to bring you along for the ride. So uh, consider that subscription button, consider that notification bell. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. We're going to be in all those social communities sharing what our thoughts are on products on trail rides, events. Uh, we got our podcast rolling into 2020. We got some great things lined up and we only want to grow bigger and stronger with you, the community.